The title of today's sermon is called Thanksgiving. If you look at the title, if you notice that the, you know, the word giving and thanks is uh, T and G is, uh, is capitalized and uh, it's a little bit of word play. Thanksgiving. And today I want to share with you uh, from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19 and 20, and 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, 16, is that what? 16, verse 18. Let's read it together. It's not too uh, long. Ready? Let's begin. Singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, and making music to the Lord in your heart, and give thanks for everything to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians sixteen eighteen. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Again, yesterday is a, a Chuseok. Um, many people say Chuseok is kind of equivalent to the uh, American Thanksgiving Day. It is a day that they give thanks for the plentiful harvest that, the, you know, that God has blessed them with. Uh, believe it or not, I do remember that during last year's Chuseok, I preached also about Thanksgiving and, but today I wanted to share something a little bit different about giving thanks and how giving thanks, how it relates to maturity. And oftentimes when we think about the word maturity, growing up, being spiritually mature, you know, we think about maybe being able to pray. We think about, you know, I mentioned, you know, being able to serve is a sign of maturity. And, and I mentioned about those things. Uh, but sometimes we overlook that oftentimes giving thanks is also a sign of maturity, how it correlates with that. And, and I wanted to share with you a little bit about that today. Uh, but today, before I do that, I wanted to share, first of all, about first of all, what giving thanks really is. And as you will know, you know, giving thanks is not just about giving, showing gratitude about the things that we have. It's not just about saying thank you whenever we receive something. Giving thanks is a more of an attitude. It's a state of mind. Giving thanks, uh, having a heart of gratitude means that you have this attitude of thanksgiving constantly, all the time. Again, going back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 16, verse 18, it says, Be thankful in all circumstances. All circumstances. It means that we're to be thankful in two ways. Number one, all the time. But the bottom line is that you know, good things do not always happen to us. Sometimes bad things happen to us. Sometimes people get fired, they get laid off. Sometimes we get into a little bit of accident and maybe we get hurt. Sometimes we get sick. Sometimes we get into an argument. And our life is not always about good things happening in your life. But the Bible clearly tells us that we are to give thanks all the time for all circumstances. That is what it means to have a heart of gratitude. Giving thanks, not just in good times, but in difficult times. But some of you might be asking, you know, but Pastor Paul, that's not so easy. You know, it's not, hard, it's not that easy to give thanks when things are uh, so difficult. I understand. I completely agree. But I do want to share with you a little bit about Paul's perspective. Uh, 1 Thessalonians is a letter that Paul wrote. And he gives us insight as to how and why and when, how he was able to give thanks, even during difficult times. For those of you who study the Bible, understand the life that the Paul, the disciple of God, led he did not have a good life. In fact, he had a very, very difficult life. When you study the Bible, you, you understand that Paul, he, he lived a very difficult life, a lonely life, a homeless life, constantly persecuted. He was chased, people trying to kill him. Oftentimes he was hungry. He didn't have a roof over his head. He was cold. And many times he lived under the threat of death. But Paul says that, you know, in all things, we need to give thanks. And the reason, there's a reason why Paul was able to give thanks in all circumstances. And I want to share with you three reasons. First of all, very briefly, how Paul was able to give thanks in all circumstances. Number one, Paul knew that no matter what, no matter how hard, that his home was not here, but his home was in heaven. And for that, Paul says he was always thankful. In Romans chapter 8, verse 18, it says, Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory He will reveal to us later. What Paul is saying is this, I know that life here on earth can be difficult at times. I know that sometimes difficult things happen, and it makes us sad. We worry. But what Paul says is this, Our home is not here. And the hardship that we face here, it doesn't compare to the greatness 
the amazing greatness, the blessings that we're going to receive when we're in heaven. See, Paul was able to give thanks in all circumstances. Because even though they may, they, there might have been difficult times around him, Paul was able to focus on the fact that his home is in heaven. And the suffering that he's suffering now won't even compare to the glory and the blessing that he will receive in heaven. And that is why Paul was able to give thanks in all circumstances. You know, I shared this story with you a long time ago. I think, in fact, one year ago today. I want to share this story with you. It's a story that a friend of mine shared with me. One day he was visiting a homeless shelter in the city of Houston. And right in the courtyard, he saw this old lady sitting on a wheel wheelchair. And as he approached her, he could tell that this old lady, you know, in a homeless shelter, on a wheelchair, yet she was singing praises to God. And as he got nearer, and as he looked, upon, as he looked at her face, he could tell that this lady was just, just filled with such joy and happiness. And even though, that, uh, you know, even though you know, we're all supposed to be happy, it was really hard for him to understand how a lady, an old lady, at a homeless shelter, on a wheelchair, could be so happy. So he asked her, you know, you know, I mean, it was kind of difficult and awkward, but he said, you know, how is it that you're always so happy? And her response was simply this. She says, I'm happy because I know that someday and someday soon, I'm going to be in heaven. These are the words that came out of a lady without a home, living her life on a wheelchair. You see, we can always give thanks because the suffering that we suffer here doesn't compare to the blessings that we're going to receive in heaven. And secondly, Paul was thankful in difficult times because Paul knew that the difficult times that he experienced was an opportunity for him to learn and to grow. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, it says, That's why I take pleasure in my weakness and in the insults hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You know what we forget? We, I mean, this is a truth that we all know, but, but we don't realize it, and we don't really appreciate, is that, is that we learn and grow, not during easy times, but we learn and grow during difficult times. This is a truth that all of us know. We all know that as a child, you know, you know, when my son runs and when he falls down, you know, I know that most mothers, their first instinct is to go run up there and say, oh, my poor baby, are you okay? And you, you lift them up, you wash them, you know, say, oh, are you okay? And then, then, you know, the baby starts, you know, crying. You know, that's really not the best way to raise a child. Because, you know, when you try to take away their pain, every time they experience pain, it doesn't help them to grow stronger. In fact, it makes them weaker. So as a parent, oftentimes when our ch child suffers, it's hard to watch. But we allow them to experience that hardship because we know that through those hardships, that's the way they're going to become stronger. When my son falls down, I just tell him, Are you okay? Get up quickly, get up. And it's not because I don't care, but because I want to make my son stronger. Because we all know this truth. It is not through the easy times that we grow. But it is through difficult times we learn and we grow. And that is the same with our faith. Our faith does not, it grows, it grows. But our faith truly grows. Not during the blessings. But our faith grows during difficult times. You know, the Bible makes it very clear. It is easy for us to praise God and thank God. And be grateful when good things are happening. And you don't even have to be a Christian. But it takes real faith to give thanks and trust in God and move forward during difficult times. So for Paul, he knew that even during difficult times, even though it might be hard, it might seem hard, and it is hard on him. For Paul, he gives thanks, he gives thanks constantly. Why? Because he sees it as an opportunity for him, for his faith to grow stronger in the Lord. And lastly, Paul says he was always thankful because no matter what, he was simply thankful because he was used by God. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 12, he says, 
And I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped me to spread the good news. You see, for Paul, no matter, you know, even though he lived a very difficult life, he was thankful. Because the difficult life that he experienced, he knew in the midst of it, he was being used by God. You know, next week, we, our plan is to play softball with the Chinese congregation uh, at Hanbi Church. You know, growing up, one of my favorite sports was softball, too. I loved it. I loved softball. But when I was young, they wouldn't let me play because I was too small. I was too weak. And then finally, when I was old enough to play, uh, I got, you know, they let me play. But it wasn't easy. In fact, the practice was really hard. We had to practice three, four hours in the sun, and they make you run. But more than that, when you're first starting out, you make lots of mistakes. You know, you drop balls, people kind of, you know, yell at you, coaches yell at you, they tell you to run around the field every time you make a mistake. And, and when you make a mistake, not only other people, you know, scrutinizing or criticizing you, but you feel bad yourself. But you know, even through all of those things, there's a sense of joy in my heart because you know, at least I'm on the team. Instead of being on the sidelines, not being able to participate, in some ways being useless, at least I am on the field, I am part of a team, and I'm part of a, uh, I'm a, a piece that helps the whole team win. And that's the attitude that Paul had. Even though life might have been hard, he knew that, you know what, ultimately I am being used by God. So you know what, so what? You know, I might be hungry today, but I'm doing this for God. So what? I, I'm tired, I'm not getting much sleep, but I'm being used by God. And he found joy and pleasure in that. And because of that, because of that attitude, he was able to give thanks to God in all circumstances. You see, there's a difference between being a Christian versus being a Christian who is grateful. You see, not all Christians are the same. Let me repeat, it, repeat that. There's a difference between simply being a Christian and a Christian who is grateful. You know, there was an experiment done in New York City, Central Park, long ago, by an advertising company. And this is what they did. They dressed up this man, and they made him up to be a blind. Somehow they maybe put up glasses on him and, and put, gave a cane on him, and, and they made him, you know, and dressed him up as a homeless man. And they gave, not only did they dress him up that way, but they gave him a sign to hold with a cup, with a tin cup, you know, to get beggars, you know how they, they beg for coins and change. And around his neck, they gave a little sign that says, I'm blind. And they put him in the middle of a central park, begging money from other people. And when they did that, on one single day, he was only able to collect four dollars. Well, next day, they changed things up a bit, but not much. The only thing they changed was the sign that was hung around the blind man, the homeless man's neck. Everything was the same, but the sign, instead of simply being, you know, with the sign that read, I'm blind, the sign now read, it's spring, and I'm blind. Spring, as in weather, it is spring, and I'm blind. And on that day, he collected forty dollars. Ten times more than what he collected the day before. Do you know why? The reason why they say this man, homeless man, collected ten times more was because whenever people saw the sign, it's spring, it reminded them of how blessed they were that day. How blessed they were to be in this beautiful weather. And how blessed their life was to live in such a wonderful day. And when these people realized how blessed they were, it compelled them, it made them, it enabled them to want to give more than a day when, when a, than other days when they didn't feel like they lived a blessed life. Do you understand what I'm saying? You see, there's a difference between simply being a Christian versus being a Christian with gratitude. See, when we have this added heart of gratitude, we live and act differently. 
We live differently when we have this attitude of grat uh, gratitude. We act differently when we're grateful to be alive. We feel different when we're grateful to be used by God. We, f we act different. We are different when we're grateful in knowing that we're going to be in heaven. You see, this is the power of gratitude. And that's why Paul, the apostle, was able to make such a great difference. Because no matter what went on, no matter how difficult things were for him, he was always grateful for God's blessing. And that enabled him to, to, enabled him to continue to give and to serve. Today I want to share with you something very important. A very important aspect of thanksgiving that many of us neglect in our lives. And that is, and I mentioned earlier, thanksgiving is a significant evidence of spiritual maturity. And the reason why I say that is because as Christians, we say to ourselves, you know, I want to read the Bible more, I want to pray more, and I mention to you all the time, we need to serve more. But today I want to share with you that one of our goals should be also that we need to give thanks more. But more than that, we need to give thanks, giving. You see, thanksgiving is an evidence of Christian growth. And oftentimes, the Bible uses the, our body, our physical growth, as an illustration of spiritual growth. You know, like a baby. I mentioned you know, a while, you know, while ago that you know, a baby, when you're young, other people have to feed you and take care of you because you can't take care of yourself. But as a child grows, they tend to be a little bit more self-dependent you know, uh, self on, self, what's the word I'm looking for, self-sufficient and so forth. And then the true sign of maturity is not only are you self-sufficient, but when you grow up, you serve others. And I use that illustration to show that as a Christian, being able to serve is a sign of maturity. Well, I want to apply the thanksgiving in the same way. You know, when a child, when, a, when there's a child, when they are first, when they're young, you know, as a parent, you see our child, and they're not grateful. They don't have the attitude of gratitude. You know, my son and my daughter are here listening and so forth. But, you know, when I look at them, I always have to teach them to be thankful. You know, when we go out, you know, oftentimes, maybe once a week, we like to, as a family, go outside into our neighborhood. We walk around, and, and we like to, you know, maybe, okay, let's just treat ourselves and find a nice restaurant to eat. So we walk around and we look at this restaurant. And my son, he's got a very expensive taste. He loves sushi. And we walk around and, and there's like sushi restaurant. And you know, my son goes, Dad, let's go eat it. Let's go eat sushi, 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 sushi. And I have to tell him, William, it's too expensive. Let's go eat, you know, maybe, uh, uh, you know, maybe a, uh, I'm trying to think of a Korean word. Maybe some stew, komtang, or or, uh, or or something, you know, something a little cheaper. And my son goes, "Man, Dad, you know, you're so cheap. You know why? You know you don't want to spend money. You know why? Why you only want to eat cheap stuff?" And I have to teach my son, William, Faith, you have to be grateful. You know. We cannot always eat expensive food, but you need to be grateful for the little things. But it's not just William. But a child, they don't have the heart of gratitude. For them, they think everything, you know, they want more and more and more. And as a parent, we need to teach our children to be grateful. Whenever they receive a present, <coughs> a present for Christmas, are they thankful? No, they're happy. They're not thankful. And we have to tell them to be thankful. Because they're young. But we expect that as a child. But then when our child grows up a little bit, and as they get to be teenagers, and when they're given something, if they don't say thank you, what do we think? We say, they're so immature, they haven't grown up. But let's move on. Let's say they're in their 20s and 30s, and somebody gives them a present, but there's no sense of gratitude. What do we, what do we say? You know, they have no manners, and they're immature. You see, gratitude, like serving, is a sign of Christian maturity as well. A mature Christian... One of the signs and one of the evidence is that we are able to be thankful for what we have. You see, one of the big differences between my life now and my life 20 years ago before I became a Christian was, nowadays I am grateful for the little things that I have. While compared back then, I wasn't even thinking about some of the things that I'm grateful for today. 
Simple things like my health. It's not just because I'm older, but I know that every time I pray, every little thing, all that is good is from God. And because of it, I'm thankful to God. When I pray for my family, when I was young, I was never thankful for my parents. I mean, I loved them, but I never said to myself, Mom, I'm, God, thank you for my mom that prays for me. I never thought that. But now when I pray, I'm thankful for my mom that prays for me. Even years ago, you know, when I first got married, you know, when I prayed, I wasn't really saying, thank you, God, for my wife. I was, you know, I mean, I was, but I was, you know, usually saying, oh, God, you know, make my wife realize how blessed she is and how lucky she is to marry a guy like me. Well, I didn't say that, but I kind of, you know, thought that. But now when I, you know, now that I'm mature, I'm so thankful for my wife, even just the little things, you know, accepting me for who I am, accepting my, you know, temper and, and just being there for me taking care of my children and being a, a good pastor's wife at this church. You see, as a Christian, one of the signs and evidence of maturity is the ability to show gratitude not only to each other, but more specifically, having gratitude toward God. Secondly, Thanksgiving is also it's a reflection. It's reflected in our giving. Second truth that we need to understand. Number one, thanksgiving is a sign of maturity, spiritual maturity. Secondly, thanksgiving is reflected in giving. If you're truly thankful, you will give. Thanks means giving. When we truly believe and realize how God has blessed us, you know, it's not a chore for us to give. You know, it's amazing how, you know, when you travel, I remember, you know, people oftentimes, you know, you know, they ask me, you know, what's your first job, what's your first job, and so forth. And, and my first job was stocking. But my second job, stocking means I used to work at grocery stores stocking stuff on the shelves. But my second job was I was a, a busboy. Busboy is a, is a, I don't think Korea has it. But in America, there's, there's a waiter and there's a busboy. Waiters are the ones who take orders and, and, and so forth and maybe refills the cup. I mean, you know, they help with the serving a little bit. But busboys are the ones who usually take the food out and then clean the table and refill the drinks. And I remember I used to do that. And, the, you know, it's amazing how time used to change. Even like 20, 21 years ago, the tip used to be like 6 7%. You know, I lived in Korea now for three years, so I don't know what the going tip rate is, but last time I remember, uh, tip was uh, 10%, but now I hear that you have to tip 15%. 15%. So if you eat like you know, $10 worth of food, you have to leave a tip of $1.50. And people do that. And people that are wealthy, my goodness, they don't just do 10, 15% tip. They leave 20, 25% tip at a restaurant. Now, why do we tip at a restaurant? And again, this is hard to apply because we live in Korean culture where we don't live a tip. But in America, you live a tip at a restaurant for the service that's well done. If they serve you well, if they give you all the napkins, if they're timely and, and you know, they provide everything that you need and do you know, refills quickly, you know, you're showing your gratitude to those server, saying, thank you for serving me. Thank you for making my eating experience such a pleasant one. So we leave a 15% tip. And yet, there are many people that have a hard time giving 10% back to God. You see, one of the first things that changed about my life when I became a Christian was my giving. You know, most of you know, at least you know because I've told you, I'm a very frugal person. I don't like to waste money. But I wasn't always frugal. I used to be cheap. What I mean by that is, not only did I like to, you know, not waste money, but I just like to hoard money. I like to save money, collect money. I don't like to spend it on others either. I just wanted to save, 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 and have lots of money. And believe you me, the last place I wanted to give money was at church. Because I was always calculate. oh my, you know, I would, I would get mad at my mom and dad saying, Mom, you know, you give so much money to church, but you don't spend money on me. And that was my argument with my mom. But when I became a Christian, all that changed. Because when I became a Christian, I realized how much God loved me. That God saved me. He died for me. 
And it's hard to just explain it with words because my gratitude is beyond words. And when I realized that for the first time, it was not a work, it was not a chore. In fact, I wanted to give. The Bible teaches us to give 10% to the church. But you know what? It was more than that. It wasn't just about giving what God, you know, Bible teaches us to give. It was giving because I wanted to give. And 10% was the minimum that I gave to God. Whenever there were circumstances, you know, if I felt like God gave me a new job, whenever I had a new position, guess what? I would give first paycheck to God. Whenever something good happened, whenever my brother's business did well, it was my brother's business, I would give thank you offering to God. Whenever my parents or my dad was sick and when they became well, I would give thank you offering to God. You see, I would, I, don't get me wrong. I'm not paying God for his service. You see, I give offering to God after I see the blessings. And it's just a reflection of my gratitude. And throughout my life now, whenever something good happens, we're just, I'm just compelled to give because I'm so thankful. I am so thankful for what they've done. When some of you do certain nice things to me, you know what? You don't, you know, I don't have to do it, but I want to repay it back to you for the good things that you've done. You know, when I see the praise team, I've thought about this for many times, when they work so hard coming to practice every week, you know, I just want to buy them lunch. And I actually, you haven't, but I've invited, I told the praise leader, you guys can come to my apartment, my house, and my wife will cook for you. <laughs> Why? I don't have to do those things, but it's a, it's a simple reflection of my gratitude for the work that they've done. You see, thanks. It's a, thanksgiving is a sign of maturity. But thanksgiving is also about giving. You see, thanksgiving is not a thanksgiving unless it is expressed. And the reason why I say that is in Luke chapter 17, they tell, it tells us a story about ten lepers. How they were healed. How they were healed by God. And yet, out of the ten, only one came back and said, thank you. And Jesus said, where are the other nine? And the reply was, he was the only one willing to take time to go back and say, thank you. Because of that, Jesus said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. You see, expression of, expression of gratitude is also a reflection of our faith. And like most things in life, gratitude has to be learned, like I've said, and practiced. We don't all express gratitude the same way. Some of us, we say thank you verbally. Some of us, we say thank you through a card. Some of us, we do it through small gifts. Others, through giving. Giving of time and money. But no matter how we are to do it, we are to express thanksgiving. Because if you don't express it, honestly, then you really are not thankful. As I mentioned, when God saved me from the life of hopelessness, and he gave me a new life of hope, a new life in heaven. My response to God was a natural, naturally that of gratitude. And when I realized that for the first time at the age of 21, I told God, God, thank you for saving someone like me. Thank you for loving a wicked person like me. And my natural response to God was, God, my life is yours. My time is yours. My money is yours. My life is yours. You see, Jesus suffered for us. He died for us. He saved us. And if we truly believe that, then we ought to, as God taught us, to live a life of gratitude. Showing gratitude each and every day. I pray that we will become such a Christian. Let us pray.